High energy prices mean Russian coffers continue to be replenished. But how long can Vladimir Putin and the Russian economy withstand international sanctions? Joining us right now is Bill Browder. He is the CEO and the co-founder of Hermitage Capital Management. At one point, until 2005, he was the largest portfolio investor in Russia. He has a new book that's out this week titled Freezing Order, a true story of money laundering, murder, and surviving Vladimir Putin's wrath. Um, Bill, we've known you for a long time, and we've known this story. Maybe not all of our viewers understand exactly what happened. Why don't we just start looking back? You, Hermitage Capital was the largest foreign investor in Russia up until about 2005, and then things looked very different. Um, your lawyer, Sergei Magnitsky, uh, was murdered in 2009, and, and you spent time tracking down following the money, and what did you find leading back to that murder? Well, so he was murdered for uncovering a $230 million government corruption scheme. Uh, we traced the $230 million, um, and we found that money going all over the world, um, including and up to Vladimir Putin. And um, uh, it's been my mission for the last 12 years since Sergei was murdered to go after the people, up to including Putin, to make sure that they face justice. And in 2012, uh, a piece of legislation was passed called the Magnitsky Act, which freezes the assets and bans the visas of human rights violators in Russia who killed Sergei and elsewhere. Um, that legislation now exists in 34 countries. And Vladimir Putin really doesn't like that legislation. Uh, he made it his single largest foreign policy priority to repeal that legislation. Um, and uh, unfortunately for him, that legislation was the template which is now being used to freeze all of his assets and all the assets of his oligarch cronies um, in many countries around the world. Bill, I, I'm amazed at how you have followed up on this, what has happened through all of this. And, and you've been chased by, by thugs. You've had people chasing you in Aspen, chasing you in the streets of Manhattan. I, I mean, honestly, I'm surprised that you're still alive. Why don't you tell us just a little bit about what has happened along the way? Um, well, as you can imagine, uh, well, first, Vladimir Putin is a very angry man. He's angry at me because his money is at risk. And um, uh, in addition to making it his policy to repeal the Magnitsky Act, he's gone after me in all sorts of terrible ways. Uh, I've been threatened with death. Um, I've been threatened with kidnapping. Uh, the Russians have issued eight Interpol arrest warrants to have me arrested uh, so they could get me back to Russia and kill me in one of their prisons. Uh, I live in London. They've tried to extradite me. As you mentioned, they've been chasing me around the streets of New York and Aspen and Madrid and Geneva and all sorts of other places. Um, it's been a, a terrifying uh, 12 years. But one of the reasons that I am still alive is because on one hand, Vladimir Putin wants me dead, but on the other hand, he still had one foot in the civilized world. He was sort of trying to go to the G20 conference and all that kind of stuff. Uh, unfortunately, since February 24th, he's put both feet into the criminal world. And so the, my level of risk has increased exponentially. What do you think of the sanctions that have been placed on, on Vladimir Putin and on the Russian oligarchs at this point? Um, I, I would say that they're pretty, pretty great. Um, I think that the sanctions are stronger than, than I could have ever imagined uh, the U.S. And, and Europe uh, uh, sanctioning uh, Putin and Russia. Having said that, I think there's a whole bunch of places where more sanctions need to be imposed. Uh, in, in my opinion, the oligarchs are the trustees for Vladimir Putin. They're the ones who hold his money. And um, uh, so far, we've only sanctioned 20 oligarchs. There's about 118 of them. Uh, we should at least be um, increasing that sanctions list. And as you mentioned uh, in the intro, um, the one big elephant in the room is that while we're sanctioning oligarchs, while we're sanctioning their central bank, um, every single day, um, the West, and, I, and particularly uh, Europe, is sending Vladimir Putin $1 billion um, in the form of do uh, dollars for oil and gas. And it, the, the war in Ukraine costs a billion dollars a day, and the um, uh, payments that, that the West makes to Putin is a billion dollars a day. And so he's kind of breaking even, if you will, um, on this whole operation at the moment because we keep on sending him money to kill Ukrainians, and that's got to stop. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.